Um, yeah, Kevin, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, Joe Marie, thank you very much for, uh, um, for choosing uh, ODI to launch your report. And I think it's a very important report. And it's a very important report because uh, we need to be talking more about these issues, about financial, global financial governance. And global financial governance are development issues. Uh, they affect development, uh, particularly for the reasons outlined uh, uh, in, in the report, but also by, by Cyrus already. And you've stolen much of our thunder, so I can be a bit more concise uh, in, uh, in, in discussions uh, on this. Um, it's, um, uh, I think it's also a good choice of, of institutions in the, in the report. And yes, we can talk a little bit about sort of there, there are other, uh, other institutions that you can think about, like a WTO is talking about a, a trade finance uh, or about currency manipulation, which is uh, probably also very important in the area of financial uh, governance. You can also talk a little bit about sort of whether the report is complete enough about uh, the D20 has many issues in it, uh, not just issues that it's, it's, it's uh, focusing on at the moment, such as monetary coordination, uh, a coordination of monetary policy, which also have a development impact. So, like, think about the QE tapering. Um, but I think uh, overall, it's 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 a it's, it's a good choice of uh, of institutions, and uh, and we should all be thinking about this about the international financial architecture. We should all be thinking about how this international financial architecture can can help to promote. Uh, more and better finance into developing countries so they can can help uh, uh, can, can be developing uh, this and uh, uh, I'm currently uh, leading the European report on development that is particularly asking those type of questions about uh, uh, and there are a number of uh, researchers here in the room who are working on this who are asking those sort of questions uh, and of course there are domestic issues but there are many inter uh, important uh, international financial uh, issues and we should all be interested in thinking about IMF shock facilities, do they work? We should be thinking about uh, IFC, so an, an institution that the World Bank has put in place, uh, whether it's really transformational in terms of development. We should be thinking about whether uh, tax regimes, uh, and, and particularly the transfer pricing regimes that, that are currently in operation and are in use in countries like Kenya, are, are actually working for, for Kenya itself and what OECD is, is doing in this, uh, uh, in this area. Um, so uh, echoing the importance of the report. Um, then a bit about sort of the report focus. So it's on governance and on impact. Um, I think in governance, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's absolutely right to point to um, the, the, the lack uh, of, uh, uh, of adequate governance in the, in the area of financial regulation uh, and, and financial governance more widely. And at, uh, here at ODI, we're currently working on, uh, on comparing uh, governance across trade uh, climate change and uh, and financial governance, and actually, we what we see is that in financial governance, there's much less go uh, going on than um, than there is in the area of uh, of trade. For instance, the WTO is much more uh, a much more transparent institution uh, and much more democratic institution. Um, and in climate, there's also some democratic process in place. In the area of finance, there isn't there, and that's probably why we get 1.8 score, which is not four, uh, which is the maximum. Uh, so. Um, uh, so I think that's uh, that's really important, uh, and so uh, and we want we are interested in thinking through uh, and, and hearing more on what next next year's report will uh, will, will will bring whether we get a 1.9 or not um, and uh, in this area, but then I think impact is a bit more of a difficult area, and uh, and this is uh, an important area um, that we need to uh, think more on, and uh, so uh, um, Cyrus already alluded to the work. Uh, that we did on the D20. And I remember being, it was in 2011, uh, it was at a South African Treasury just before the D20 meeting at that stage. And I was arguing we should have scorecards uh, for each of the pillars of the D20 uh, de development group uh, focus. But, but it's actually quite hard to think about impact in that way. And, uh, and I can also tell you why. And um, I've just evaluated uh, with some others uh, FMO, which is sort of the IFC equivalent, but then for the Netherlands. And uh, they had an evaluation framework that, um, that, that did scores. And uh, so uh, you would score and you would, you would have an impact score, which was 67. And, uh, and then the aim was you need to have 70 the next year. <laughs> and that's very difficult to explain to the outside world, because the outside world, then they, they don't know what that means. They want jobs. Uh, they want how many jobs does it generate. And then it becomes much more complicated, because you can't actually uh, translate that impact of an IFC on jobs um, very easily in their scoring terms because what they report on is direct jobs generated in the, in the NFC companies. 
they don't work their way through the second round effects, the, the input output models, the, the effects they might have on productivity and the indirect jobs generation for infrastructure projects might be much greater uh, than, than you have on, on health or education projects mm -hmm. in the short run. So um, that becomes a very difficult issue in terms of, uh, of, of how you do, uh, how you do uh, uh, impact assessment. You need to think about a causal chain, you've got a measure. Well, what is a measure? And I think you do a good job of thinking through what are, could be potentially um, financial regulation measures, but you need to think through that, uh, that first. You then need to think about transmission mechanisms, um, and those are very complex already. And then you need to think about how does that uh, affect individual countries. And uh, uh, I mean, I've worked a lot in the area of trade, and then trade rule, uh, tr new trade rules at the WTO would have very could have opposing effects on different types of countries, and so some countries could lose, some countries could gain from the same rule. So, so you might score, it, it, it might give a higher score, but actually some countries might might lose out, others might gain, and therefore feed a feedback mechanism with uh, with country experiences is going to be very important, and also the development of the of of the future future reports, and that's sort of the work that we did also with the, uh, the Commonwealth, is to ask. Uh, uh, countries uh, and to report on that and say what is it that you think is useful that the D20 has put in place? Uh, is it what you've done in the developed working group or is it all the other areas that are important, the financial regulation, the, 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 um, the, 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 the what the FSB is talking about? And they actually, uh, many of them say, well, actually all these other areas, the core areas of the D20 are just as important or maybe more important than what, what is put in place in the developed working group. Um, so, so teasing out those effects are, uh, are going to be um, uh, will be very important, and it's going to be very difficult to do. And I'm not arguing here for a, a randomized control trial <laughs> type of uh, evaluation because you can't uh, you can't put another IMF in place or another one and so on. But for some more detailed uh, impact assessments uh, with, with uh, teasing out the pathways through which this might affect different types of countries, I think that could be very helpful and would be a, a logical next step for this. So I can see lots of potential for this uh, this report, and and uh, I will be quite interested to see what comes out next year. What institutions can do, uh, maybe the policy implications. So to think about what what institutions can do to score uh, a 1.9 rather than a 1.8. What is it that they need to do? I think it's easier to think about it in the area of governance. Uh, in terms of in impact, it's going to be more difficult to see how they could score a higher, higher uh, get a higher score. But but so I I, would, I think really good to think about governance uh, in this report. So thank you very much for for this report.